Hello everyone, welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Oh my gosh, in the last one, we did a little detective work, but we didn't get too, too far, especially with Miss Pink old Hootie McBoobs, and then the attorney Hootie McBoobs, the lawyer, Grossberg, I think was his name. I think we're going to trial now. We've basically got everything we could get out of the place, but I'm worried that we actually don't have enough. I'm a little scared about this. Oh dear, I hope that we're gonna do okay. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Oh no! Ah! <gasps> oh! 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 There he is! There he is! The famous prosecutor! Oh my god, he's so handsome! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be gushing over him the entire LP. It's gonna get old really fast, but whatever. I know who I am. I know what I'm about. Oh my gosh! Do I know what kind of voice to give him? Not at all. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. <laughs> if only, girl, I would pay to see that. In reality, there's probably loads of that on the internet, so I'll probably just go look at that later. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. No, you don't. I'll watch you do it. What? Never mind. This is going to be very unprofessional very quickly. <laughs> oh, no. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your first witness. What? Girl, how you gonna be... Don't be dictating how this is gonna go. You ain't the judge, please. <laughs> The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Oh no, what's he gonna say? Oh buddy. People are saying that they didn't like my generic male voice for Gumshoe, but I don't know what kind of voice to give him to be honest. I'm not very good with like, New York style accents or anything like that, and I don't want to make him sound too silly. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir! I'm the detective in the charge of homicides down at the precinct- Sir! Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Oh, very well, sir. Let me use this floor map to the office to explain. Oh. He's got a floor map. Are we going to be able to get that? The body was found by the window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object- Sir! The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker, Found next to the body, sir. Okay. That pretty much looks like what I remember. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. Excuse me, objection! <laughs> That's slander. Or something. That ain't right. Mm -mm. The court accepts the statue as evidence. Didn't they have that earlier? They're still calling it a statue. Oh yeah! They don't know. They don't know, do they? Like, what it actually is. Maybe that will work in our favor. We do have the floor plans, okay. So we're probably gonna need to use those soon. Probably should look at them. Oh, oh, girl, oh, girl. Don't need to be looking at me like that, I'm ready. Don't give me the sass. <laughs> now, detective. Y -y yes sir You've immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. <laughs> oh, good lord. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Yeah, I'm about to give Edgeworth some hard evidence. <laughs> sorry. This is gonna get so old. I'm so sorry. If you were expecting something serious, I feel for you, bro. Alright, Maya Faye's arrest. Let's hear about this. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Okay. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Uh-uh. Don't even turn this around on me. It wasn't me. Wasn't me. <laughs> Saw my boss in the office. Wasn't me. <laughs> I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why does he look so happy about it? Oh no, here she is. I know she's gonna make an appearance. Why? We had a witness account describing her. But she was all the way across the fucking street. How the fuck did she see anything? It's dark in there. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. 
No, she did not. There is no way that that happened. The very moment, you say? Well, how? What the fuck? Is she part eagle or some shit? There was no way that she saw in a dark room. As if you're in a building that's lit up, above a building that you're looking into across the street, and it's dark in there, you can't see nothing. Everyone knows that. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Oh, I'm going to. You just wait and see. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? Yeah, there was only like two statements. I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Maybe we have to press them all. Whoosh. What? What was that? What? What just happened? Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What is it, a note? Girl, save your notes for later. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. I just said that. Well, okay, at least I'm on the right track. We'll get through this. There's got to be a way. The witness always slips us and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Heh. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. We can do this. Something the matter? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Oh, Phoenix. All right, let's not fuck this up. Oh, Edgeworth, you just saved those bedroom eyes. Give me five minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Let's just, let's just do everything like they suggested. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Well, how fucking convenient that she was just looking there. Hmm, okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. That's all right, we'll keep going. Right, please continue. Don't worry about it, we got this. There were two people there already. Well, can I press this little part right here? I guess I can. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took? Between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right. I'd say it was about three minutes. Th that's pretty fast. Our motto this month is quick response. That sounds gross. I'm not even gonna... No, I'm not even gonna do it. That's how I got there before the killer got away. He looks so proud of himself. Indeed. So, tell us who the two people you found on the scene were. Yeah, that's kind of what I was asking about. Yes, sir. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Let's just try it. I'd, he's probably got nothing to say about this. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Phoenix! <laughs> well, they did say press everything. Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair. Excuse me, look who's talking. You two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. Uh, Phoenix, I don't mean to be rude. But your hair is definitely spiky. Holy crap. She is pretty unmistakable. That too. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. I mean, it's not its not going to be against us, right, if we do that. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. On what grounds, though? She was just there, just like I was. Why is that? What's your reason? Why? We had a witness account describing her. Let's hear about this one now. Lord. Hold on just one second. I yeah If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Wait, did I just press on something by accident and we, we got it? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. Uh, you, you said it. Wait, what? <laughs> this is going very fast. <laughs> exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't Pink Pal. Uh, sir? Sir, yes she is, and yes she is. But did you even look? You had to have looked at her. I know exactly why you decided that her testimony was true. Please, gumshoe. Mm-mm. Don't be swayed by the pink titties. Come on, man. Pull it together. W well, I guess she is pink. Gross. Never mind, don't listen, children. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. I think we just got him on that. He's going to have to change his testimony. Do you have any other solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Yeah, isn't like... Isn't just eyewitness testimony not considered hard evidence? That's just he said, she said crap. Um, <clears throat> I guess pressing can have his advantages. All right, well, get your ass moving and go press against Edgeworth a little bit. No? Never mind. What is happening here? <laughs> yes. 
So, sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor. Sir! I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. What, that you stared at her boobs for ten minutes? Please, we know. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Oh, Lord. All right, let's see what he says the second time around. Hard evidence. Let's have it. Give me the hard. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. Okay. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Don't look proud about that. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Okay. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Hmm. How are we gonna get around that? How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Look, please, I only just met you. Let's save the hard evidence for later. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y y your Honor? Why did you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Yeah, really? Couldn't that, like, get you arrested nowadays? This court is a sham. Uh, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Oh, God, this guy, he tries, but he just doesn't make the mark, does he? Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Great, what are we gonna press on that? The only thing I maybe think we could press on is the two last things. Should we press them all? God, I'm just not sure. I do want to see if he changes anything else. Because he might. He just might. After securing the suspect, he examined the scene of crime with his own eye. I mean, why not? This is going to take a hot minute, but we got to make sure we're being thorough. And did you find any evidence? Now, now, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen. I'm getting to the good part. Oh, good lord. Alright, fine. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Tell me about this. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Ho ho ho! Then who did write it, smarty pants? What? Who? Um... I, I did! What? Oh my god. The killer could have done it. It's true. Whoever the killer was might have set them up. I did. I, I almost want to answer I did. I did it! The, the killer! Anyone can see that? Huh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please! No, I'm saying she was framed, you dumbass. Good lord, haven't you ever been in a court before? What? Oh. Oh. Oh, Edgeworth, you can object me anytime, baby. I'll listen to that all day. Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Uh. Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Ha! I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Uh, I'll take your tall order. Why are your hands so big? Yo, Edgeworth's got the yaoi hands big time. Holy shit. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Don't talk to me about opening mouth. Never mind. This is just getting out of hand. Yeah, pal. Shut up! <laughs> this is getting out of hand quickly. Well, Detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Do we need to press that? I mean, honestly, we know that that's true. Let's do it anyway and see what happens. Do you have proof it was Maya who wrote that? Of course I do, pal! Uh-oh. He sounded pretty confident. This might be not be good. Phoenix, you dummy. Lab test results show the blood was the victim's. <sighs> okay. Hang on a minute. What kind of tests were these again? Huh? What kind? Uh, well... I hear they take the uh, little bits in the blood. The, uh, uh hemo... hemo... The Hermo Goblins, the Hobba, the Hobglob, the Herma Gobba Goblin. Are you really a police officer? Uh, surely you would know how to say that. I refuse to testify in this matter, sir. I'm no expert on blood tests. Wait, something's wrong here. Yes, that was quite clear. You may continue with your testimony. Th thanks, pal. Uh, I mean, your honor, sir. Oh, lord. Detective Gumshoe? Y yeah? I think you can expect a pleasant bonus in your next paycheck. What? Oh, that was a mess. Right, where was I? Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Oh, are we really gonna press all this? We have to, don't we? Or else they'll never figure- something's wrong already, though. I feel it. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? 
the right hand. Mm, she was right-handed. Ha 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 ha! Nice try! Uh-oh. I guess it wasn't too hard to see what I was getting at there. Before she died, the victim wrote, This is what I is wrong. Can we look at anything here? Something's wrong with this. Can I look at this without presenting? Yeah, okay. Time of death, 9-5 at 9 p.m. Cause... No, this is what it is right here! I knew something was wrong because we'd read this earlier and it said the death was instantaneous. And didn't I mention before? How the fuck would she have written something if she died instantly? Is this what I have to present here? Should I try it? I mean, I have some- I have tries, so if I fuck up, I can try again, right? I think this is the right track. This has to be it. Detective Gumshoe. There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? Yeah, you- you slapped that paper, Phoenix. What? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it! Who else could have? Uh-uh. You have it backwards, detective. But backwards The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it! This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to blow from a blunt object. She died immediately! But- No butting your way out of this one, detective. Yeah, save the butts. We already did save butts. Order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. What are you gonna object about, sir, other than being much too handsome for your own good? <laughs> Mr. Wright? I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Don't even try this. You're gonna come in with a different one? We got it the day after the murder, didn't we? The day of, the day after. I think we got it the day after, because we had to go back and talk to him about it, did we not? Yeah, I think so. It was the day after the murder. Yep, it was. I remember. The prosecution's point being? What? You waggle your finger at me. I'm sure that you've done that in the past. <laughs> that autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. Well, then why didn't I get a copy of it, you slimy bastard? What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. How is that even legal? Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But, there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! How could he have procured that? They already had one. That's probably all falsified. Who did you pay off? With your giant yaoi hands. Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. Oh dear, if you weren't so handsome, I'd throw something at you. Like, never mind. <laughs> I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something to up your sleeve. Oh dear. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Oh no. What do we even do? Oh, any of these are bad. Does it matter? Th this is all a sham, but I am not. You're a sham, and a very handsome one at that, Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright! The defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. I didn't attack him, I was asking a question, you old bastard. Go ahead, keep finger wagging. I'm just gonna use that to my advantage. <laughs> <laughs> no matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. No, the court accepts the evidence. What are you stuttering for? Are you taken in by his charms as well? Well, this isn't great. So we have a new one. Fucking fantastic. Well, Your Honor. The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes? No, it's not. Well, this is ridiculous. Oh, this isn't good. Phoenix, how did this happen? The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own- Oh, here she come. 
Here she come. Oh, Lord. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Oh, this is gonna be something. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Exactly, exactly, Phoenix. I am with you, brother. Oh, Lord, here she go. Girl, you still holding that shit up? Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Woman. Honestly, what is your damn- Oh my- Oh, look at her. Good God. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. Well, what did you expect? She's barely clothed. Isn't this against some kind of law? You don't come to the court dressed like a fucking... I don't even know. Like a really slutty Power Ranger. I'm sorry, you just don't do it. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. Oh my- Look, she's shifted a little. She got her hands holding up her face, but her elbow's still holding up the goods. It's alright, she's managed this. She's got this down to a science. Holy shit. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Hopefully not Edgeworth. I will fight that bitch for him. <laughs> Tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred. Um, oh gee, I was like, uh, in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Company law offices? Hmm, that's right, big boy. Woman, I'm about to slap you. Do not even try. He is mine, and you will fucking refrain from that kind of thing. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Alright, here we go. What are we gonna get her on? I'm gonna press her on everything, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll press her, alright. It was, like, 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. Oh, and then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then, the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Really? Then, the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. <laughs> Yo, how expensive is that hotel? Because I refuse to believe that you could afford to stay there and not afford to buy yourself a bra. I'm just saying. She purposely didn't wear one for this. Well, Your Honor? I see. It is a remarkably solid- What do you mean? How could she have fucking seen any of it? Y'all are just- Ugh. These horn dogs believe anything this woman gonna say, huh? I bet. I don't see a need to doubt- to trouble the witness any- Wait, Your Honor. Yeah, don't I get a cross-examination, no matter what the fuck you think. Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? Exactly. I thought the witness testimony just now was quite <clears throat> firm. Yo! You hiding a boner behind that desk? I swear to fuck, we need Judge Judy up in this bitch. N boobs? It don't matter how big they are. Judge Judy will not be swayed by any of this nonsense. We need her up in here. Mr. Wright, I understand you and Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. What does that mean? Excuse me, what are you implying? Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hey, look, whatever works, you shouldn't talk with your waggly finger. You need to stop. I'm taking that as an innuendo. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Of course we will, yeah. Something's weird about the last parts of that. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Yeah, like, gravity, I think, is probably one of her main ones. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. <laughs> God, I'm trying to take this seriously. Holy shit. Alright, don't stare at the boobs. Don't stare at the boobs. We have to concentrate here. It was like 9 o'clock. I'm not going to do her voice again for this. We already read it. Looked out the window. I mean, are we going to press everything? Do we need to press that? Her looking out the window. I don't want this to take too- let's just see. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. Uh, what do we want to- mm. Can I read it over really quick and then decide what I want to press? Because when you're first reading it, it's hard to kind of take it in. Hmm. Uh, I, 
it. Just, how did she see it from all the way over there? The woman with long hair. That was Mia Fey? Uh, um, slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Rude. Of course she's one of those bitches. Your thing? She was very pretty. What are you talking about? And the person attacking her? The one attacking her was the Massey girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you fucking know that? It was dark in there, bitch. You got night vision or some shit. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She, she, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? You don't know jack shit. There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. It was me. Don't, don't miss words, Edwards. You were looking. It was, it was me. <laughs> it wasn't her. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. No, I question. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You're lying to me, girl. You don't even have a bra on. Please, that is the mark of a liar. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? What a if she was attacked... Wouldn't she have been, like, in a place where the window wasn't even, like, made her visible? That's what I'm thinking. Uh-oh. She's going crazy now. She got the crazy eyes. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Someone tell me because I'm clueless ab about this, I mean. What? Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fey, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. That's also- Phoenix! I wouldn't even have thought of that shit! Uh-oh. Girl, you keep that nervous twitch to yourself. Yeah, look at her. The first thing you would have noticed probably is the purple and the outfit and the hair. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. Yeah, she looks like a shrine maiden or something. However, the witness testimony mentions neither of these things. You slam those hands down, boy. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, because the detective saw her too. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Ugh! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I... I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Ew, he's like 80 years old. You have no shame at all. Hootie McBoob, you need to quit this. Oh, she's going to do it again. So what is she going to change now? Just saying about the, about the outfit and that's it? Oh, fuck, we're going to have to see. I'm sorry if my voice is, like, really raspy on- I mean, I know her voice is supposed to be raspy anyway, but my god, I've been so sick. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hope you guys are okay. Alright, here we go. I did see everything. I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. See, it's this picture. I think we've seen this already. This picture makes me believe that she didn't see anything except Maya. Or Mia, sorry. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. But you can't even see anything from that- from that window. It looks like a jacked up arm too. That does not look like Maya's arm to me. And and she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock? The thinker, I think. How does she know it was a clock? Wait a minute, nobody knew that until right the second. How did she guess? She could not have seen it from that far away. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> No, that's wrong. You are wrong, woman. Nobody in this whole thing has said it was a clock until right now. That you're lying. How did you know? You must have touched it your fucking self. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. I've got you. That's gotta be what it is. She lying. Why the fuck you lying? I did see everything I did. I'm gonna go right to that because I think that might be it. I don't want to get too confident, but I also don't want to waste time pressing everything. If I'm- if I think I'm on the right track, I'm gonna go for it. The victim and the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. I think that's probably correct. 
because she ended up being at like the right-ish side of the window if you were looking at it from her point of view. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. Fine. She hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That clock. This is it. How did you know it was, though? That's the thing. Because weren't the sh weren't the fucking. I was only gonna say this part. Weren't the guts taken out? Wasn't that part of the conversation that they had? Present this. It has to be this. There's nothing in the clock. She was hiding stuff in it. So how would you know it was a clock if the fucking workings were gone? Miss May? What you said just now was quite revealing. I think we hit this. I think we just got it. Revealing? Ew. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Mr. Naughty Lawyer? What the f- No! I can already see everything! Girl, you ain't holding no secrets! You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Oh shit, I was right! Oh my god! Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Yeah, girl, really? Order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? You did not see nothing. Ew, ugh. What you gonna object about, hot stuff? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. I am convinced this judge has a fucking heart on for Edgeworth. Why would he be agreeing with him every step of the way when I'm clearly correct? Please, get your boners out of this court. This fucking court, all full of, of boners. This is ridiculous. Don't any of you get laid. Phoenix probably doesn't either. He's not, that's not important to him. I have questions, your honor. That's all I've got. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. What, you got a boner for me too? Probably not. Objection sustained. You make, oh, no, he does. He has a little bit of a chub for me. That's good. All right, let's continue this. If you stop me there, the trial will be over. <laughs> if I stop now, the movie will be over. What? So what happens now? Good lord. What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That that? You got nothing, do you? Because I heard it? Woman. Even on a regular sized street. A street that's like in between those two buildings. You did not hear it unless you were there. And even if you were there, you didn't hear it because there's nothing inside of the damn thing. No, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. What are you, fucking... Jeez, you a bat or some shit now? The law offices of Faye and Co. where the murder took place are very close to the hotel. No, they're not. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No. This is a farce. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... She couldn't have heard it. It couldn't have rung. Because there was nothing inside of it. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Because it's empty, right? It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Yeah, open it and see. And if that's not enough, we have it on the cell phone, don't we? That it's nothing in there. We have two pieces of evidence, I think. How could you possibly? Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? It's just as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. I got you, bitch. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. She's gonna be mad that you called her fat. Fat? I knew it. Girls always harp on that. Well, Miss May? Edgeworth, what you gonna do now, bro? Other than use that finger for good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tisk at me. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty? Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say. It can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? 
If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there's no contradiction. Who would have removed it? It was taken into evidence right after. Edgeworth, I've got it on the phone. Please. Edgeworth, it's on the phone. Oh, Edgeworth. You are too handsome for me to be wrecking you like this, but I'm about to wreck your booty hole. I'm so sorry for you. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. By who? And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Oh, please! There was no time for her to do that, even if she could have done it. Can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, impossible, of course. No, I've got it. Do I have to present it now? I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is it's on the phone. Yeah, yeah. It has to be this. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Oh, the judge likes the cute little cell phones. Ooh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is a defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Oh shit, gonna drop it down now. Order, order! Oh, Edgeworth, that's not a good look for you, darling. The defendant's cell phone? This, this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. Ugh, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. Oh, this is gonna be hard for Maya to listen to. Poor girl. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you, then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? Oh, that's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Beep. That's it. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning, before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> Girl, stop, please. Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? She's gonna have to do this. Oh man, how much longer is it? This is the problem. I wanna do like the whole trial, but it may be too long for these kind of things. Is it okay to stop here? I hope it is, I'm sorry. I'm not sure about the pacing of this just yet. It seems like some of the trials are longer than others. We're gonna have to have her explain it to me in the next one. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Oh man, I'm gonna get this bitch. I can't wait. See you later.